Hello. To discuss cognitive dissonance to me is very important. And the reason that I needed to wrap my brain around what it meant is because it allowed me to push through a barrier in saving myself that I wouldn't have done had I not had a full understanding of what was going on. Let me explain, because it took me a while to understand cognitive dissonance. When we see the good in people and don't see their bad, or even we see their bad, but we accept their good as their truth, and there's a whole lot of ugly going on that we ignore, we have two conflicting things in front of us. We believe what we choose and not the entirety of the truth. We choose to be with this person even though we know they're bad for us. An example of cognitive dissonance that, that everyone can relate to, whether or not you've ever, I've never, I'm not a cigarette smoker, but cigarettes. There's no way on earth at this point in 2021 that anyone could argue that cigarettes are bad for you came out in what the 70s surgeon general warning okay so at this point we all know they do it anyway people do it anyway people still start to smoke now which that shocks me when i see a young person pick up a cigarette i'm like oh my god but anyway you have a lot of people in their 80s 70s they're not quitting they don't care and they know it's bad for them they've been smoking since they were 15 and they're not going to stop that's cognitive dissonance they feel one way about it, they know about it, but they're going to do it anyway. The people that you get involved with, the narcissists, chances are they don't share the same values as you. I think we've all learned that because they're just on a different plane. The behavior doesn't match our narrative that we want for ourselves. Their behavior doesn't match. We want someone that's true and loyal and strong and capable of handling communication and all of those things, right? The problem is if their good is so phenomenal, but their bad is so toxic, the choice is very difficult. And it seems easy to other people. They may see toxic and have a hard opinion like, oh, how could she be with that person? But they don't see the good. And you do. And it's phenomenal good, right? We all know when the narcissist is on, if you had a charming one, man, their, their love bombing is good. So you're torn. That's cognitive dis dissonance. The significance of understanding this to me was to be able to view my contradicting behavior more honestly to myself. I realized I was behaving staying that was the behavior I was staying yet knowing the truth of the situation and being sad or mad all the time my behavior didn't line up with my words and thoughts that was extremely disconcerting to me because I do try to live an authentic life I do it it's more peaceful for me inside. It brings me my zen and my chi is elevated by me living my authentic life. I don't lie. I can't. It's, I tell on myself. I, I, I was a tattletale as a kid. I mean, I'm just, I, I, I'm just not, it doesn't sit well with me. This didn't sit well with me. It felt uneasy. And because I detest that in the narcissist, that his behavior didn't line up with his words. When, when my behavior didn't line up with my words, I was really stressed out. It was stressful for me. So I started to pay attention. And before I knew it, my behavior got back to being aligned with my words. I felt so off. I had to do something, right? So I couldn't have a sustained a relationship wherein the cognitive dissonance was so extreme. I could not have sustained that. In attempt to make it be peaceful because the conflict is so stressful, I sought to change the narcissist rather than exit the relationship. Because you're really left with two choices. 
And once I realized that that was impossible and I, I could have stayed, I guess, and continued to suffer that stress, but the other choice is to leave, right? So I tried to change the narcissist. That was my first, you know, to, if, to balance out the cognitive dissonance, I thought, well, I'll just change him. And then my truth will line up with his truth. Okay, you can't change a narcissist. Fast forward through that chapter. We know that. So now it's, okay, so do you stay and be sad and continue through the cognitive dissonance, which is causing you stress, cognitive dissonance, which was causing me stress? Or do you leave? Those are really the only two choices left once I realized I couldn't change the narcissist. I was never going to not have that conflict and thusly the stress of that conflict if I stayed. I was never going to suddenly, the other half wasn't going to change either. My belief system was never, I was never going to suddenly think his behavior was okay and I'm like in line now with my belief system and his behavior. So those things were never going to be in line. So you either have to leave and break that cognitive dissonance or stay and deal with it. If you're feeling like you're, narcissist is bad for you and you know that they're bad for you and you have that gnawing thing inside of you that when you when I looked in the mirror at myself I started to not recognize myself I started to look worn and tired and stressed and not peaceful and anyone that knows me in my life will tell you Renee has worked very hard for a, over a decade in trying to achieve the state of mind that I have achieved. So I was determined, nope, I love me more and I am not going to allow someone to come in and wreck what I've developed for myself. So you might be, I, I, you might be, maybe you've been with your narcissist for the 15 years that I've been divorced. My narcissist was just the last, over the last couple few years. If you've been with your narcissist for that long and you're like, well, Renee, I don't even know what you mean. I wouldn't even know how to start to get my own peace back. I've been in this torture forever. Well, part of the torture that we feel when we're in it, I realized once I understood cognitive dissonance, I realized that that is a real big part of what's causing you stress because you're trying to get from him or her you're begging for them to match their words with their behavior in other words I had said to my narcissist towards the end stop saying any words stop Boop. stop saying any words time and action those are the only two things that are gonna show me that you believe that you mean what you say are time and action I was saying this to him in the relationship before I even learned about narcissism. Time and action. Well, obviously he never did the time or the action and he just kept saying words, saying words, saying words. That bothered me that his behavior didn't line up with, with his, it's so disturbing to me. And you would explain it to them and they have no answer and they'd come back with nothing that's concrete and you're absolutely racking your brain. Like how can they not? Once I realized that my behavior didn't line up with my words, I thought I'm no better than him. <gasps> That's exactly how I felt. I just relived it. Ugh, to think that I had anything in common with him. But I did, and I had to look at that. So now I'm thinking, you're so down on this person because their behavior and words don't line up. Well, mine didn't. I'm saying I can't live like this. This is, I'm never again. How could you do that? I knew this, 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 and this, and this, and this. Activities were against the grain of any of my belief system, yet I was staying and trying to work it out. Oh my God. And I didn't really get how much of a conflict it was Till I read the vocabulary associated with it, the examples they give, which cigarettes is very often an example that they'll give in terms of, because everyone goes, oh, okay, I understand what you mean. 
So I was not quitting smoking is essentially what was happening with my narcissist. Never took up smoking knowing when you were a child in the 70s, that's when it's all coming about, right? And you never, I never took up smoking. And I knew it was going to, well, when I was five, my mother, I asked her, what are those, I was like four or five, and I said, what are those long white sticks? This is a sidebar. And she said, here, suck it real hard. That's what she said. Take a deep breath. She said, suck, suck this and suck it real hard or something like that. Whatever she, word she said, I did. And I choked for like two hours. Never, ever, ever had, it was the, probably the smartest thing she could have done. Never, ever picked it up. So, and I always thought as an older person, I was either always too broke or you're in college or you're scraping money together. And I also knew it was just going to be eventually something I would need to quit. So I never had an interest in starting smoking. So here I am in a relationship with the narcissist, and now I have to quit. With the cognitive dissonance, just like the cigarettes, and now I have to quit. So I know it's bad for me, and here I am in it and loving it, or convincing myself I loved the relationship. Because that's what you do. You think of your 5% guy, you think of the love bombing, and you think of the good times, and we did laugh, and we did have fun, and we danced, and we did blah, blah, blah. So you're thinking of all that stuff. So you want that relationship, but you know it's bad for you. It was so embarrassing to myself that I landed in that, in that, in that place. I was so torn up inside that I allowed myself to land in such a contradictory place. And so I quit. Cold turkey. Well... The final time was cold turkey. It's never cold turkey with a narcissist. You go in and out, and so I guess technically I can't say that. But I just want you to understand that because if you are suffering from stress inside, it may be lined up with the fact that your belief system and your behavior are not in line with each other. Your belief system of knowing what's good for you, what's bad for you, what they're doing that's bad, your belief system that they should not be treating you this way. That belief system, those items are not lined up with your behavior, meaning you stay, you try to work it out. You And I commend anyone that tries to work out a relationship. I really, really do. But with the um, cognitive dissonance, that's a tough one. That was a tough one to swallow for me. I couldn't do it. I could not do that once. Once, it, once I saw that, it was really stressful for me. So chin up, whichever level or point you are in your relationship with your narcissist, but I just wanted you to have that information.